Test, test, test. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. How y'all doing? Praise God. Oh, my God. I see a lot of new faces. Who hasn't been here? Who's visiting? Who's visiting? No, you're not. Hi. How y'all doing? Welcome. Welcome to Arizona Deliverance Center, guys. On behalf of Michael W. Smith, not the singer, but the minister of deliverance and hardcore Christianity team, we welcome you. Thank you so, so much for spending your Friday night with us. You could be doing something with your family. You could be doing something with loved ones, whatever, going out, whatever you do. But you decided to come here. Amen. Praise God. To glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's going to be glorified tonight. We decree it and declare it in this house. He's going to be glorified tonight. Amen. Not a man, not the team, not anybody, but just the Lord Jesus. Amen. He's awesome. So I just want to go over a few announcements tonight. We just, um, we want to just, uh, maybe a little few house rules or something. But, um, if anybody has seen the, the, we have, um, you know, we can park out here in the front, but I was told that there's a, the neighbor across the street, we got to be careful about parking out in their uh, driveway. Uh, there's a, somebody was, I guess their bumper was in front of their driveway. So be careful with that. Um, there's parking in the back. There's parking uh, along the sidewalk and there's parking also in uh, near the healing house. Um, we want to encourage those who are referring the he uh, people to Healing House. We are, we have to do a background check. So it's not just for, it's not just to come and, and stay at the Healing House just because you have no place to stay. So those of you that know about that, just be careful of how you, re who you're referring them to. If you're referring somebody that needs to be at the Healing House and wants to stay, refer them to Ron Estrada. He's the house foreman. So, um... And what was the other thing, Kelly, that we needed to go over? Bookstore. There's a bookstore, guys. Check out Plano Spirits, Brother Mike's book. It's a manual on mental illness, how to minister to the mentally ill. Praise God. Uh, there's uh, Pigs in the Parlor. We have an abundant supply of Pigs in the Parlor by Frank and Ida May Hammond. They are pioneers of deliverance ministry. You have to read that book. I think it's just a, a phenomenal book. Brother Mike's book is phenomenal. He gets to the root of mental illness, something that the Lord gave him. Amen. The revelation of mental illness so praise God um, we have um, what was the other thing there's just uh, just over the the parking oh there was a healing so pray yeah praise God I'm sorry yeah brother Mike <laughs> so there was a, a powerful healing yesterday I got to pray for a lady and she's not here I don't think Trina you here Trina no she came all the way from Oklahoma her and her husband to minister to her husband's parents because they're both in the hospital sick and she said I need to come to the house of healing to get prayed and filled first before I go and decide to minister to my my parents so her back was healed she said that she showed me her arms and they were short you know you get shortened arms and then you're sh she had shortened legs and the Holy Ghost pulled those arms out straightened out her shoulders and her back she said I can feel the power of God in my hip. I can feel the power of God in my shoulders. I can feel my arm growing. <laughs> it was awesome. No, I, I'm just, I just said, can I pray? You know, can we pray for your legs and your arms? <laughs> She's like, yeah, you know, look at They're short, you know, one shorter than the other and the leg is short. So it was awesome. She goes, I have no more back pain. She went through a powerful deliverance of past hurts, soul wounds, and that back pain left her back straightened out. So she's Said, it's gone praise God I'm believing that um, she said that she's got other uh, sicknesses but she goes I think this is just gonna be the beginning of, of healing amen so praise God without further ado we give God glory for brother Mike tonight amen hallelujah so, good, evening. good evening welcome to the deliverance center Karina is gonna stay here tonight and we're going to line up all the sick people. She's going to blow them out. 
That's why we're here. Amen. All right. Uh, I'll do the announcements real quick, but tonight I wanted to talk to you about something really interesting. Uh, it's on the uh, charismatic prophetic movement, but I'm going to teach on something that includes that, but expands it significantly. Okay? And uh, there's a couple of books here I'd recommend you take a look at. I don't sell them here, so you'll have to get them from somewhere else. But one of them is The View Beneath, and the other one is uh, Purifying the Prophetic. They're quite remarkable. This one, Purifying the Prophetic, is uh, a book written by a prophetic evangelist. But it's uh, a nuts and bolts look at the entire movement and the uh, need for holiness and sanctification in it. And then this one is written by The View Beneath, a woman who was in the movement for many years. And uh, there's a lot more strange supernatural experiences in that book than the other one. <clears throat> Neither of them understand the kundalini spirits that well, reading the book, but they know that something's wrong. They just can't put their fingers on it. And I put my finger on it in the seminar, but I'm not going to be doing that tonight. So, okay? Those two books I would highly recommend. Very insightful, interesting look into the world. Speaking of an interesting look in the world, divine healing is our next seminar. That's a strange subject. We'll explain it in detail. Uh, I will not be here next Friday. Uh, Rick will be here teaching. And uh, his last teaching here got more looks at YouTube than mine do. <laughs> so I'm negotiating a deal with him since he's more popular than I am. We're going to have him teach three weeks a month, and I'm going to teach one week a month. We're trying to up the viewership. So, and there was a lot of great comments about his last teaching. He's here tonight somewhere. He'll be here helping us with the altar, but there was a lot of great comments here. I think it was like two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. Anyway, that's been the highlight of the deal. I'm thinking about dropping this one, 1280. Uh, I'll, I'll give you more information on that later. This one may be getting dropped too. I'm not sure. That's our West Valley station. I'm reorganizing my ministry a little bit, as you can tell, moving Rick in and moving me out. <laughs> and <coughs> all the radio programs are always on soundcloud.com on the internet, okay? And then uh, tonight's teaching will be on our number our two, second of our four YouTube channels. House of Healing AZ, okay? And our Thursday night meetings where she was just talking about that lady that got that dramatic healing, that was last night. That's always on our live stream channel. And if you need a miracle list sent to you, I'd be happy to do that. Send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you out the list. If you're mentally ill, that list's wonderful. If you're a troubled Christian, like 99% of the Christians in America, you need to get this list so you can renew your mind. If you get healed or delivered and you don't renew your mind, you will eventually lose your healing and your deliverance. That's right. Most of them lose it. Okay? Renewing of the mind is as important as being healed or delivered. Yeah. Yeah. Two people said amen and the heathens <laughs> said glory. If you don't believe me, you can go to the testimonial page on the website. I got a whole list of testimonies of people that were went through that list and got healed. Yeah. So it does work if you Apply it. <clears throat> YouTubers, I need you to open up your terror cells. I've only had one a terror cell this week. Okay, I need more. I'd like to have two to four a week emailing me telling you open up a terror cell at your church and start picking off the sick people. Our donation boxes are on the doors there. And uh, during the teaching and just after that, we lock the doors. And they can't be opened unless... You put something in one of the boxes. It's a new electronic trigger system. <laughs> what am I talking about? I made that up. Or you can donate on the website. Thank you. I won't be here next Friday. Rick will be here, but I will be in Oceanside, and we're going to 
take a shot at killing these folks at the seminar. I'll teach twice that day, and uh, these poor people don't know what they signed up for. That's right. <laughs> Feel sorry for them. All right, I got a really good Bible study for you tonight yeah. through God's holy word. Now, years ago, I'll do this part quickly, and then we'll get to the Bible. In 1992, a revival broke up in Toronto, Canada at an airport. And this thing was spectacular. And people came from all over the world to this revival. And there were two guys running it, Randy Clark and John Arnault. They were great guys, fa fabulous. He, Arnault was the pastor of the church. It was like a 200, 300 group church. They, they were, he was great. Uh, Randy Clark, I met him a couple times. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. He's really a wonderful person. But what happened was this, this uh, revival broke out, boom, and I mean it broke out fast and powerful. Wild things started happening right out of the gate. <clears throat> what happened was <coughs> Satan uh, sent a bunch of familiar spirits and infected this revival. And so during the revival, you would have this person getting healed over here, then the guy over there howling at the moon. Then you'd have somebody over here getting filled with spirit. Then you'd have somebody over here crawling around like a goat. And you had these strange manifestations mixed in with the good ones, the good things. See? Right. And the revival was very much like us. If I was to ask you or you or you, do you have a lot of good things about you as a person, spiritually and personally, you would say yes. And then if I said, do you have some things that are bad about you that are you like to get rid of and that kind of suck you would go yeah and then I would agree with you I was there's stuff about me that just needs to go I've been working on some stuff for years and there's other stuff I want to keep you can tell I'm not a TV preacher because nobody would ever admit that on YouTube <laughs> but everybody's got flaws everybody's got things that that are not right. No, nobody's perfect. Christ was perfect. We're not. Those of you who think you are perfect are usually in politics <laughs> or have what they call NPD, Narcissistic Personality Disorder. Everybody's got flaws. Well, this revival had these terrible flaws in it. And this thing spread everywhere, all over America, all over Canada. It's gone through half the planet practically and this is part of Satan's grand plan as Jesus warned us even the very elect will be deceived at the end remember that mm -hmm. so what the the only way that can happen is if the devil mixes in good with bad he's too smart to just give you something totally bad okay so Christians generally speaking have very low discernment ratios but if I brought a witch doctor in here doing a ceremony uh, trying to heal somebody's something 99.9% .9 of the people here would see that and go hey that's demonic that's of the devil correct Slam dunk. Uh, if I had a room full of Lutherans, about 50% of them would catch that. <laughs> Even Lutheran would catch that. So the devil, infinitely smarter than we are, doesn't come at you that way. He comes subtly with something that looks okay. Mm -hmm. He's too smart for voodoo. That's for another setting he runs that show. Church show different. It's not hardcore occult. It's Christian occultism is what it is. See? And it's a subtle little thing. Subtle thing. And it's sweeping the world right now. And it's going to continue to sweep the world until a person rises up somewhere on the planet. He's called the false prophet in Revelation. This guy's a freak. The Antichrist was mentioned numerous times in, t in Scripture, Old Testament, New Testament. The false prophet pops out of nowhere 
in Revelation. Nobody knows anything about him. No one had ever heard of him before until John revealed it in Revelation. They didn't know he existed. They knew all about the Antichrist. Nothing about him. Well, he's the key ingredient to the end of the world. He's the stick that stirs the drink, as Reggie Jackson used to say. Kind of dating myself there. <laughs> Quote Reggie Jackson is not good. He must be in his 60s. The false prophets, the one that takes the religious Christian world, puts it together like Chrislam. And the occultism and he mixes it all together to create mystery Babylon the new world order of religion mm -hmm. where all the religions kind of come together minimizing their differences and yeah. maxim accentuate you know their uh, positives and you can see it happening right now like like it's happening right now so my guess is the false prophet is not that many years away. I wouldn't be surprised if he's alive right now Absolutely. Maybe in grade school or something. I would not be surprised okay? I may not see him, but He's coming. He's coming He's definitely coming Okay, but I'm not going to go into the prophetic stuff. I want to show you something much more important But it relates to this Those were the guys of the Toronto Blessing. They're, they're wonderful people. Good and bad have to be mixed. Do you follow me? Yes. So people go overboard in some circles, trashing this person and that person. I know all about that. I, I'm viciously trashed because of the stuff I teach you. Like people hate me. Absolutely. Um, well, when they meet me, they're just incredibly happy. <laughs> <laughs> but these are not bad people. A person who teaches a false doctrine or believes something that's false is not a bad person. They are not servants of Satan. They're not monsters from hell. Hey, they're spirit-filled Christians. Nobody's perfect. Is anybody here perfect? Just raise your hands. We can just laugh our guts up at you. You're perfect. Let's get a, gather around, folks. Here's the lady. That, she, she's a sucker. Nobody teaches perfect doctrines. Elizabeth, Elizabeth, yeah. shush! I thought I did. No, you don't. All right, first I do not. If but however, if I get caught, which I enjoy getting caught, I switch it fast. I, I change it fast because the Bible says teachers are held to a higher standard on Judgment Day, and I don't want to get my butt kicked on Judgment Day. So if I'm screwing something up and I see it, I I quit doing it immediately. Or I try to quit doing it. Some of it's personality driven, and I got serious personality flaws. And uh, <laughs> oh, that guy's got massive personality flaws. I, I'm not near as bad as him. But anyway, you know how that works. Okay, now let's check this out. If someone comes to you, Paul, uh, Paul ran into every everything I just said and more. Paul ran into when he after he built the Corinthian church. So he leaves and he gets these reports and these things start happening weird stuff starts happening in the church So he has to send him a note He sent several letters. We only have two of them. We know there were at least four and probably more knowing him So he sends him a letter and says hey, whoa red flag if somebody sends you Comes in there preaching about another Jesus alos meaning one of similar kind and quality Who we have not preached now that word preached there in Greek is in the past tense, but it's in the aorist tense, meaning it passed once. Only happened once. Right? As opposed to, is Rick here? 
There he is. Rick has a huge IQ, but uh, years ago it was a lot lower, and he used to sell hot dogs. <laughs> And that's how he supported his family. He was selling hot dogs at ball games, and because of his effervescent personality, he was able to sell volumes of hot dogs, you know, and make the car payment and everything. Boy, he was selling hot dogs like crazy. This guy can sell hot dogs. <laughs> that wasn't in the AORS tense. If I said Rick sold sold some hot dog a hot dog last week, no, he was selling hot dogs and continuously selling them. So that would not be in the aorist tense. Okay, that would be in the past continuous tense. He repetitively, every week, sold hot dogs. Right? Paul said, hey, I, I came to you once. I preached the truth to you once. But these other people are coming in, preaching repetitively. Lambanete, if you receive present active tense, if you are receive and continuing to receive this crappy information, Okay? That's what he's warning about about a heteros totally different spirit mm -hmm. Paul had come there once and taught them about the Holy Spirit That's right. and the great Son of God and he gave them rock-solid truth at that time once and all these people got <laughs> converted and the Holy Ghost moved in fantastic then after that they kept they started to get bombarded with these Kooks, spiritual kooks coming in. And so he's warning him about it. And he says, they're teaching not the Holy Spirit, they're teaching another spirit, which is what I was just talking about a minute ago during the Toronto thing. You had the Holy Spirit, and then you had the other spirits mixed in. Mm -hmm. It's a mix. It's a it's a mix. Same technique. Satan does the same thing. Over and over again, if it works, he's a creature of habit. If it works, he repeats the behavior. Amen. He's too smart not to. Then it says, or if somebody preaches heteros, a totally different gospel. See? That you have not accepted. In the past, once, when I brought you the real gospel, I gave it to you. Bang! There it is. These guys are coming in repetitively preaching all kinds of different gospels prosperity and all this other crap mm -hmm. The same thing we have now right. nothing's different That's right. Good can be with bad Let's check it out In Oops, I'm missing a slide here where the heck I, I'm sorry, Numbers 22, okay, I, I blew that one. Check this out. The children of Israel set forward, pitched in the plains of Moab, on, the side, on this side of Jordan, the uh, west side. Check this out. Uh, Jehovah took the Jews out of Egypt, and he's killing it. Nobody kills it like Father does. Nobody. Nobody. Oh, ten plagues of Egypt. You're getting your faces kicked in. Red Sea crossing, everybody heard that news, and everybody, all the gods, are shaking in their boots. When the Holy Ghost shows up, demons start manifesting. It's the same principle on a smaller scale. The Holy Ghost around, the demons, man, they're, they're shaking in their boots. They're saying, oh my God, we're going to get our faces kicked in. Demons, like people, don't like their faces kicked in. <laughs> Well, the Jews are killing everybody. They're taking over territories. They are mopping up armies. Jehovah is liquidating the idolaters from the promised land. Centuries ago, he had told Abraham he would give him. Right? Everybody knows what I'm saying right now. I apologize for that slide. Balak, the king of Moab, okay, his name means spoiler, Saw Israel coming down the pike. So they're down here on this side of Jordan, and then Moab's down here, and the Jews are coming up from Egypt. Here, they're marching down into the promised land, and they're mopping everybody up as they go down. 
and uh, Balak sees it and he freaks. He was he was scared because the the next uh, group of people on the menu practically was the Moabites. They were going down next. I'll show you that map in a minute. They were afraid because there were so many Jews now. They were getting out of control because Jews back then they bred like rabbits. <laughs> Because God told them, hey, start cranking out some kids. <laughs> Let's get it done. I'm giving you all this land. I want a bunch of, I want my children everywhere. So they're breeding like mad dogs. And there's Jews everywhere. And you can see them from the mountaintops. Okay. So Balak is panicking. And they said to the elders, this, this, this group of Jews, these Israelites, they lick up the ground like a dog ox licks up grass. That's Jehovah. Okay? Listen, once you repent of your sin and straighten your life out, the Holy Ghost is going to fight for you like you can't even believe. He's going to start body slamming the devil, choking him out, dragging him around the cage. If you don't change and you don't repent and you continue with your stinking thinking, oops, you got to keep getting your face kicked in. See, it's the law of sowing and reaping that we live under. You do what's wrong, you get a good butt whipping. That's right. You do what's right, and the Holy Ghost will lick up the ground ahead of you and crush your enemies like they are nothing. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Balak says, oh my God, we in some bad trouble, boys. It's coming pike, so to speak. Numbers 22, he sent messengers to Balaam, son of Beor. Where did he send them to? Pethor. Pethor means soothsayer. Okay, now the Moabites are down here. Pethor is way up there. The Jews are marching down. To the promised land. Balaam is God's prophet. He's been called by God. God speaks to him. God visits him. He had a destiny ahead of him. It was spectacular. He was to be like Jeremiah and Isaiah. He was to be a great, great Old Testament prophet. Never to be forgotten. Balaam's in Peshur, but he makes a mistake. Same thing modern Christians make. They hang around people they shouldn't be hanging around. That's right. Oh, that's so bad. He was hanging around a city of soothsayers. That's right. And when you live in a certain area, it's virtually impossible not to be influenced by the people, their culture, the style of living, the lifestyle, it kind of seeps into it. And Balaam, a true prophet of God, started to develop a tumor on his soul. He started to see these other soothsayers farming out spiritual things for money. Jehovah wasn't giving him money. He gave him a lot of other things, but... Balaam wanted to be a 21st century TV preacher. <laughs> he saw these other soothsayers reading poems, checking your TV, tea leaves out, uh, to reading your tarot cards. I'm using today's lingo. But he saw that. He saw they were getting paid. And the, the demons planted a seed in his soul that started to turn into economic cancer. He started to see in his mind, in his soul, the concept of spiritual benefits and remuneration. Like on TV. And he's living in an area he shouldn't have been living in. <clears throat> he's living in New Orleans, there we go. in a way. He lives up here. There. He lives there. See? The Moabites are way down here. 
and the Jews are marching down licking up every ounce of territory property you name it the Jews are taking it they can't stop me because Yahweh fights for them why they were being obedient you want to know something if you'll just change your life or your attitude or the way you think you know what father will do the same thing for you because thus saith the Lord hear O Israel I am God I do not change that's right God doesn't change you obey you get the benefits you continue to sin you continue to disobey you are screwed that's right thus saith the Lord <laughs> yeah lost some points points in glory for that but I did get the point in see the distance here now check this out it's a three-week ride by pack mule from Peshore down to Moab okay didn't have Uber then if you wanted to travel somewhere that was a three-week trip can you hear me that's important later Balak's panicking he says listen there's a uh, there's a uh, super powered prophet in Peshore okay he's not just one of the normal soothsayers up there we don't need one of them we got him down here but this guy's special okay if you have legitimate gifts from God and a legitimate anointing from God other people will notice that you are special if you start to buy that concept you're in deep trouble the only thing that makes you special is your relationship with the special one the specialness never comes from you Hallelujah. Balaam wasn't listening to me for obvious reasons <laughs> I wasn't born yet Balaam was listening to other things and so they said let's go get this guy we'll bring this prophet down here he's a super powered guy with God and we will have him put a curse on these Jews and they won't come lick up our land it doesn't mean to lick up land <laughs> dude you're dead you're dead you're an idolater okay they didn't have deliverance back then we have it here at the deliverance center when people come up for prayer we do not kill them <laughs> this is a dispensation of grace they are to be delivered and loved on Yes. Okay, back then, no, we ain't loving nobody. You're dead. You're an idolater. You like Baal? You do. You're gone. So he says they're covering the face of the earth. Well, that's what it seemed like to him, for sure. Okay, and they says, uh, "Come now, I pray, and curse this people. They're too much for us." But no kidding. If you'll change your life change how you think and repent of your sin I'll tell you what the devil will be going this guy's too much for me mm. Amen. you know why the Holy Ghost will start fighting for you, Thank you Lord. he can't lose Amen. Thank you, Jesus. he has never lost that's right he don't know how to lose that's right even if you explain it to him and I have in the past <laughs> they're too much for me I, I can't prevail now come down and we he says you join me I'm the king and I'm gonna pay you like you won't believe we will get these Jews cursed and get them killed okay come on down let's make a deal and uh, I know that you are a superpowered man of God if you bless somebody they're blessed if you curse them boom, they're cursed okay Balaam was a powerful prophet of God 100% legitimate great man of God he had a destiny ahead of him to be like a super prophet that's where he was headed Jeremiah Isaiah John the Baptist he was supposed to be in the as they say in Dallas the ring of honor yes. that's where he was headed and that's where God had called him to go God had called him to greatness as he has you he's called him to greatness and Balak a demon-possessed king recognized his anointing somebody sure got that one yeah. numbers 22 the elders of Moab and Midian departed 
with rewards of divination. <clears throat> They're only doing what they know. They know about soothsayers, they know about divination, and they know those guys. Yeah. <laughs> they say, hey, uh, this Balaam guy, this prophet guy, I'm sure he's a di he's div divination, just a different kind, more powerful for sure, and I'm sure he takes... They came to Balaam and said, hey, this is what we want you to do. Come with us and we will do all these great things together. Get rid of these Jews. He said to them, why don't you camp here tonight? Remember, they took three weeks to get there. They didn't fly there. Right. Camp tonight. They said, that's fine. What's another night to three or, three or so weeks, whatever it was. I'll go talk to Yahweh or Jehovah, Lord, means Yahweh in the King James Bible. And he will speak to me. And then I'll come back and tell you what he says. So they said, sounds good. And it says God came to Balaam. Why? I just, I just told you. He's God's man of prophecy. His destiny is Jeremiah, Isaiah. He's on his way to superstardom, so to speak, spiritually. He had a call of God on his life. And he had a destiny in his life to fulfill, which was greatness. And may I remind you, you also have a destiny to fulfill. If you don't mind my saying. <clears throat> and he says, Balak, son of his poor, king of Moab, has sent me, sent these people up here to talk to me. And behold, the people come out of Egypt. They cover the whole face of the whole world. Now go down and curse them. Drive them out. And Jehovah said to Balaam, why is God talking to him? I just told you. He is God's prophet. He is a legitimate prophet of God with a great destiny and future ahead of him. He is hearing the word of the Lord because he's the man. And God talks to him right there. You will not go with them. You, you, you will not curse those people. They're blessed. You know, that's the funny thing about the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you can be awful blunt. <laughs> that's the best time to be with him. So he gets up in the morning. He goes back to the guys. He says, listen, go back home. Scram. Hit the road, Jack. Whatever the saying is now. Yahweh or Jehovah refuses to let me go with you. The princes uh, got up. They went back. Again, three week pack mule hike. They didn't go down the street and turn left. I mean, this was a long journey. And they said, hey, king, Balaam said, no go. No. Nada. And Balak does what anybody who's desperate would do. You're staring at extinction. You're all going to die. What well, we got to lose? So he sends them back. Go back and talk to him again. Only this time, take this guy and this guy and this. Then, Bob, the more stronger communicators, the more powerful guys. I sent rookies last time. Now I'm going to send my major leaguers, so to speak, back to convince this prophet to come down here and stop these Jews. They get back to him three weeks later. Let nothing hinder you from coming. Uh, the king says, I will promote you to great honor. Okay. I will do anything you say to me. Wow. Now understand. Understand. None of this would have worked at all if the devil hadn't planted that little tumor in his soul from Peshore. He had that little thing in there. It was an urge. It was a desire for money, uh, security, nice things, luxury things, like a TV preacher. They want limos. They want mansions. They want exotic gifts. They want fancy jewelry. Yes. 
They want to use spiritual things to get it. Am I helping anybody? Yes. He had this tumor. All them TV preachers have more than tumors. It's just full-blown cancer. This guy's only got a tumor now. It's not full-blown. Okay, it's just a little tumor. Okay. Once the devil gets a little tumor in you, he never leaves it there. He always Girl. makes it grow. Mm -hmm. That's right. His mama didn't raise no fool. The devil, like Balak, is desperate. That's right. He doesn't think about it and he puts it out of his mind, but the lake of fire is in his future. He'll do anything to keep from going there. Mm -hmm. He's desperate to win. Mm -hmm. Balak's facing extinction. These Jews are going to overrun him. Everything will be lost. Children dead. Wives dead. Every soul dead. All of them gone. Jehovah said, nobody lives. That's right. They're idolaters. That's right. The most hideous of all sins. Come and curse his people. I'll do anything you tell me. You will get great honor. Now what the devil is doing, he's massaging that little tumor in there. See that? Yes. See that? The devil knows he has it, so he tells Balak in his mind, send, it, send your best men up there and offer him more. Balaam said, well, listen, I told you last time, if you, if you offered me everything in the world, I can't go beyond the word of Jehovah, my God. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, now you know this tumor is not that big. He's still God's man of faith and pro the prophetic. He's still God's prophet. Can't you see that? That's a godly thing to say. That's what you would expect God's man of faith and power to say to a bunch of guys coming up from Moab. Well done. Now, therefore, I pray, stay here tonight, <laughs> and I will go talk to the Lord again. Oh, now see now now I'm back Now I'm back in first grade see I did that to my parents I'd ask them this way and it was a no, but then I got to <laughs> come back over here Then I would come back that way to see if I could get kind of a yes Then I come back another way to try and get me a yes. I would try to work it out <laughs> Because he got a better offer and that tumors there guess who sees that tumor guess who sees your tumors Oh, the Holy Ghost sees right through you. He sees everything about us. He sees that little lust tumor, that little anger tumor, that little bitterness tumor, that little frustration tumor. He sees it clear as day right in there. He knows it's there, and so does the devil. So the devil massages it. He plays with it. He baits it. Mm -hmm. Jehovah sees that tumor too, and now Jehovah's thinking, uh-oh, that thing just grew a couple inches. Now Balaam's in trouble. I'm going to change my plans. God came to Balaam at night and said, if the men come to call on you, hello? Please follow me closely here because I got some points to make. I need to make these points. If I don't, I'm going to be sad. If they come to you, notice the instruction, Go up, get up and go with them. And what I tell you to say, that's what you will say. Okay? Balaam's a true prophet of God. And he says, okay, that's great. I'm going to do exactly that. So Balaam rose up in the morning. He saddled his ass. And he went with them. Well, that wasn't what he... <laughs> See, when I was a kid, second grade, if I wanted something that was a no, if I heard something that I could interpret in my mind as a yes, I would, I would go for it. Even if it was still a no. <laughs> that pattern of, of modifying auditory data, I continued into several of my marriages. <laughs> with the current marriage, it doesn't work. <laughs> the information is repeated several times in detail until I'm fully aware I've gathered it incorrectly. <laughs> But when I was young, I would hear stuff my own way. Yeah. You kind of hear stuff your own way. Yes. 
people hear things their own way Every married person is nodding their head around. Oh God, you don't know, Mike. You don't know. Yeah, I've been a counselor for five years, honey. I do know. I know exactly what you're talking about. He saddled his ass and he went with the princess. He goes out. Okay, time to go now. Check out this map. There it is, way up there. Sweet trip, going from there to there. He goes with him now and while he's gone <coughs> Jehovah gets angry it's a bad spot to be in if you're a prophet or anybody really and the angel of the Lord stood in the way as they traveled down there and whenever you see that phrase angel of the Lord in the King James Bible, it means uh, Jehovah It's not a regular angel <laughs> Yahweh stood in the way and now he was riding upon his ass and his two servants were with him Wow now that's an interesting statement uh, Balaam Took two of his best guys with him The only way they will go with you is if they're starting to develop a tumor too. People with sin tumors always influence other people. That's right. It's subtle. King David had a sin tumor. And he wanted to number Israel. And Jehovah told him not to do it and his best friend and his servant who'd been with him for decades didn't have that tumor and tried to talk him out of it these two servants sitting around thinking about Ooh, yeah I see that yeah limo yeah he has a Persian rug yeah that's good yeah Kenneth Copeland yeah, that's great. Yeah, I want, I want I want a swimming pool in my bedroom too. <laughs> After all, I'm a man of God. <laughs> they start thinking about swimming pools and dancing girls and different things, and they go, "Yeah, well, let's go, Balaam. Let's get her done." Well, Jehovah stops them right there. And the ass turns aside and goes into the field. Yeah, and. I know this sounds nuts, but sometimes certain kinds of animals can sense things in the spirit world. Oh, yes. Particularly uh, dogs and cats. Yes. Yep. Seriously. Yes. A lot of them will pick up demons and different things around in the spirit world. Not all of them, but I mean, sometimes they do. Well, this, uh, this ass turns aside in the field when he sees him. He's frightened, and he sees him standing there. I mean, I can't imagine what that would have looked like. And he had a sword. Okay, now that's 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 not rolling out the red carpet. A sword is not a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> and then Balaam started to smote the ass to turn her back onto the main thoroughfare, the, the dirt area. And here Balaam sinks to a typical 21st century Christian. They they say stuff and do stuff, and what they end up doing is kicking their own ass. <laughs> and half the time, it's not the devil beating them up, it's them beating them, their ignorant selves up. That's right. So Balaam starts to kick his own ass here, and this isn't going to go good. The angel of the Lord, Yahweh, stood in the path of the vineyards, Okay, a wall on this side, a wall on that. Now they're trapped. They've got trees going this way, trees yeah. going that way. And then the ass saw the angel of the Lord again. She threw herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot. What is that telling us? The donkey was panicking because the donkey loved Balaam and had been a faithful, loving servant its entire life. And that's exactly what a long-term pet is to a human being in the 21st century. They're the best friends you've got. People love their pets far more.
then they love their spouses. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no question. Oh, yeah. My wife has a pet. <laughs> it's a Flemish giant. It's one of those giant rabbits. <laughs> and it's it's a, almost like a neon blue. It's the most beautiful pet I've ever seen. It's freaky. And you kind of touch it and it, it mushes and then it comes back to the same spot almost like it's weird The rabbit we've had it five years. Okay, the rabbit every time I get near it bolts <laughs> I mean Hussein bolt boom to get away after five years. I don't do anything different I talk to it nice. I say things I try to act in friendly rabbit type manners nothing's working my wife goes in there sits down she comes over to her puts her climbs up on her on her thighs a pet and talk to each other they I can't interpret any of it and the affection there between my wife and the rabbit is extremely high between me and the rabbit it's debt zero the thing can't stand me. and it's obviously mentally ill and so I watch this rabbit and sometimes this was a few years ago I would say something stupid or nasty about it and I'd look over at the wife and, and have you ever seen a wife's face change it goes from that to inappropriate and the light hit me here yeah spouses like their pets <laughs> better than their spouses so I never did that again I, to me the rabbit is fantastic I'm always nice to it because I don't want to get thrown out the house but anyway here we're back to this 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 donkey loved Balaam and he accidentally hurt him he didn't mean to do it but he was panicking and who wouldn't be panicking in this situation I'd have been running for the fields or doing something so he keeps beating her now he's lost his temper now now check this the devil always adds something to your tumor it's a little greed now there's a little anger in there that he's being denied this this donkey is keeping him from his greed results and now he's getting mad and then the anger later on the devil keeps feeding it and it starts turning to rage and the anger goes he feeds it more and then it turns to murder then he feeds it a little more and then it turns to a mass shooting in a church see nobody woke up as a sixth grader mass shooting a church the devil trained that person and fed that tumor in the soul over the years so that years of training killed those people in that church that guy didn't wake up like that 20 years ago say I'm gonna go to church and shoot everybody that never happened you have to be fed and trained and blessed by the devil to act like a psychotic fool you don't just walk out of your womb and I'm a psycho it's not gonna happen and the, the, the donkey can't get away Jehovah's closing in on him, right? Yep. When the ass saw Yahweh or Jehovah, she said, I can't go to my left or my right. I'm stuck. She just, boom, drops. Who would have ever dreamed tonight? A donkey would teach us God's greatest spiritual lessons. The best thing you ever did in your miserable, stinking life was fall on your knees. Yeah. in worship yeah. and if you repeat it tonight the Holy Ghost will come right to you Hallelujah. <clears throat> that donkey dropped right there and guess what it saved her life mm -hmm. yeah. Balaam's anger was now explosive he's whipping this thing half to death and then Supernaturally, Jehovah opens the mouth of the ass. And she says, Why are you doing this? You got to be pretty mad 
and and really out of your mind in a way to have to have an ass talk to you to communicate with you. <laughs> You're in a bad spot. Yeah. And then the ass keeps talking to him and you know he's mad. And Balaam says to the ass, now he's not whipping his own ass, he's talking to it. <laughs> because you mocked me. See, he misinterpreted. See, that seed of greed and lust and anger you have in your soul has blocked your anointing for so many years. And the reason for that is you misinterpret spiritual things. That's right. That's good. Your anger and your frustration, your lust, cause you to misinterpret spiritual things. Yes. He thought it was mocking. Far from it. That's how he interpreted it. Welcome to the root world of taking offenses. And why they're so dangerous in Christianity. You know why? Almost all offenses are based on a false premise. Somebody said that, you thought they meant that, they actually meant that. Then there's a fight over it. You said this, you said that. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Well, I didn't mean that. I meant this. But you said that. Then you said that. Pretty soon you got racks of offenses. Ruining your anointing and your Christianity. He said, I, you mocked me, which he wasn't doing, and if I would have, I'd have killed you. Don't you see how the, the devil takes a little tumor, he adds to it. Now it's anger. Now it's murder. <laughs> you know? Here's offenses. Now it's divorce. Here it's an odd curiosity. Here it's lust. Here it's adultery, pedophilia. It all, it all always grows. Nobody, nobody falls out of the womb a pedophile. They're groomed by the devil yes. to desire that and want that and appreciate that and see that as attractive. Nobody, nobody grows up going. You know what? Man, these third graders, they are really sexually attractive. I would like to have sex with a third grader. Nobody does that. They do if a lust seed is planted in the soul and the devil keeps watering it a little bit. A little porn here, flirting here, a little sex here. He waters things. Mm -hmm. They get bigger. Now he's up to murder. If I had a sword in my hand, the irony, oh, the irony, behind him. Is who? And he has a what? A sword in his hand. You have no idea how dangerous word curses are, particularly the ones you use on yourself. Mm -hmm. He spoke out what was about to happen to him. Mm -hmm. Happen to know what I said? Mm -hmm. This guy's a prophet of God. Mm -hmm. This isn't a new new Christian. This isn't a backslidden Christian. This guy's a Hardcore, on point, prophet of God. Now ready to blow his stack. Now beating his best friend. That's what pets are that you're with for years and years. They're your best friend. In fact, tonight I'm sitting on the porch. My mother-in-law is sitting next to me. And the dog we gave him, Mocha, has developed bladder stones. So they went from seven two weeks ago to 12. So now they're going to rush her into surgery. And the mother in law says to me tonight on the patio if something happens to that dog, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. You now, people love their animals. Trust me. You know that. I mean, you, people, they get the pets get into your soul. Well, this animal here it was his best friend. And animals can be your best friend, no question about it, because they give unconditional love. I would have killed you. Whoa, that went from a little tumor of greed in the soul. Now it's went to anger. Then it went to rage. Now it's 
murdering his best friend. This guy's a prophet of God. The ass says to him, Hey, I'm your best friend. I didn't I never did anything to hurt you. I've always helped you. Why are you beating the crap out of me? Correct? Haven't I always been your best friend? Have I ever hurt you? He goes, now that I think about it, no. Then, after this asininic conversation ends, oh, aren't you listening tonight? Can't you hear it? When you're through babbling to God with all of the crap you think is important, He'll listen to you and then He'll speak to you when you're done. When you stop talking to your ass and beating your own ass, you know that God will come right to you and talk to you when you learn to shut your stout, your big fat mouth and be still and know that I am the Lord. Amen. Some people are too busy venting to the Lord to be able to hear him say anything. And then what happened? Boom, the prophet comes back. That happened to me when I was a kid. I had a big fight with my sister. And I cannot remember anything about it. But I remember I ran out the door and slammed the door. And she had, I caught her finger in the door. Okay? And I instantly went from raging anger as a kid to fear, to sympathy. Mm -hmm. it, it, within milliseconds, fear I was going to get in deep trouble for... I didn't know if it was broken or anything. I thought, oh my God, what did I do? I was Balaam. Suddenly he sees the tragic error of his insanity, as, as the New Testament calls it, madness. And then he falls on his face, which is exactly what you should have been doing. And Yahweh says, why are you kicking your own ass? <laughs> And why did you do it three times? Don't you hate it when the Holy Ghost just comes to you with some simple facts and asks simple questions of why you're doing something? But it actually turns out to be a blessing. Behold, I went here to stop you because you are perverted. Translation. You remember that little, you live in Peshore, right? And you live with all the soothsayers and you saw them making money off spiritual things and then you kind of had the urge to make money off spiritual things too, didn't you? Didn't you, Balaam? Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, I kind of did, yeah. And then these people came to you and I told you what to do and then you came back to ask me again. I knew that little tumor in your soul had grown or you would never come back and ask me. See, you would have told them, didn't I tell you before? You can go home now. You didn't do that. You came back and asked me. I saw that tumor in your soul grew a little bit that day. And then I told you to wait for them to come to you, but you didn't. You just saddled up your ass, and then you took off. So now I saw that tumor get a little bigger. The devil watches your tumor, your anger, your bitterness, your lust. He watches those little tumors in your soul. He notices when they get bigger, then he knows when to feed you again. Temptations and trials feed soul tumors. <clears throat> he sees that thing. Loneliness, fear. He feeds it. And you're you're perverted. You're putting money ahead of me. <clears throat> Well, what do we do now? Well, Jehovah changed his plans. See? The devil meant things for you for evil, but Father is going to turn it around for good. Right. So Jehovah says, you know something? I'm, I'm, I'm going to take all these screw-ups. Balak, Balaam, 
the talking donkey his servants and these idiots from Moab I'm gonna pull a fast one on him and the ass saw me and turned from me three times if she hadn't turned I would have slain you you were beating the only person that was saving your life welcome to American Christianity Christians always eat their own they always hurt the person that can help them the most Balaam said I have sinned I did not know you were there now he's an American Christian what American Christians don't know about the spirit world is frightening. They're always left in confusion. Mm -hmm. Spiritual things. He says, well, I'll just go back again. Well, Balaam didn't know the plans had changed. Jehovah was up to something else now. He says, no, go with these men, but you only speak what I tell you. Well, with seeing that sword, then it's almost like an exclamation point on a sentence. Now he's ready to listen. Okay? Weren't you in a better spot ready to listen when your spouse said they're leaving or they moved out? You, the doctor's report was bad. Uh, the, the, the layoff caught you. Isn't it interesting how Father will use the devil's trauma in your life or use you reaping what you have sown to help you later. Yes. Amen. He says, okay, whatever you say, I'll speak it no matter what. Mm -hmm. Now he's back to being Balaam, the prophet of God, which is what he was. Mm -hmm. Now he's back on his destiny road. He's back on track. I gotta be helping somebody. Listen, some of you are off your destiny road. You drifted off somewhere. You got off the track, fell off the table. You can get back on, Amen. regardless of your age. Yes. There's something left for you. None of you have ever screwed up this bad. None of you ever had God come down with a sword threatening to chop your head off. And none of you sat around talking to your own ass for all day long. You do it for a couple minutes and you quit. None of you are as sick as Balaam. None of you, were, of you are as great a man or woman as God as Balaam. Oh, don't you remember? I said good can be with bad, aren't you? Amen. He went back with them. <clears throat> and to the border of Arnon he said uh, Balak meets him didn't I earnestly send to call you why didn't you come to me the first time dude listen I'm able to promote you to great honor translation I'm able to feed that little tumor in your soul who's he talking now the devil's talking to him through Balak he's an idolater he's demon possessed just helping the devil's talking to Balaam I can give you honor, money, you name it, I'll give it to you. I have, hey, you want power? I'll give you that. And he says, hey, listen, whatever God tells me to speak now, Balak hadn't seen the sword. Mm -hmm. right. People don't understand you because they didn't have a cancer scare. Right. They didn't get laid off and they had the electricity turned off. Mm -hmm. See? It's easy for people to spout off what you ought to do, having, as my grandpa once said, never walked a mile in your moccasins. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's easy to tell somebody what to do when you haven't been through that. That's right. Well, ba Balaam had been through the sword, and he was ready to talk. And so Balak offered oxen and sheep and sent to Balaam and uh, to the princes, Sar, who's that? Those were the two, that Hebrew word is used of angels. These two guys that were with Balaam were top-notch prophet trainees. Elisha, Elijah, Elisha. 
Balaam two boys replacements okay you always have to train a replacement yeah I do that myself but I can't find one nobody's dumb enough to do this kind of <laughs> kind of work but anyway listen go set up these altars let's go he brought brought them up to the high places of Baal that he might see the utter utmost part of the people of Israel. He takes him up to the the mountain of Baal. Now you see how Jehovah changed his plans. Listen, if you'll change your attitude and stop sinning and repent and change the negative thoughts you listen to and repent of your sin and change your life, God will rub your enemy's nose in it right in front of you. Amen. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. You lost all that money. He'll restore it sevenfold. Yes. Now Jehovah's going to teach Baal a lesson. They go up to the mountain. They're looking at Jews. There are Jews everywhere. They're all over the place. If you're an Arab, that's the last thing you want to see. There's a bunch of Jews all over the place. And if you're a Moabite, it was exactly the same. Balaam said, now listen, give me seven altars, give me seven oxen, give me seven rams, let's get this thing going. And they built the altars on the top of Satanic Mountain. Right? And have you ever noticed something funny about that? This doesn't have nothing to do with it, but I thought it was kind of interesting. Seven is an interesting number to God for some reason. Ever notice that? Mm -hmm. I never teach on numbers, but... I thought I would just throw this in there tonight. Seven is a very important number to God for some reason. Notice all these sevens and all these different blessings. Amen. There must be something to that number. I don't, sure there is. don't fully understand it, but number 23, Balaam said, now you stand by your burnt offering here and I'll go yonder and I'll talk to the Lord. Okay. In his mind, he still sees a sword. So he heads over to talk to the Lord, and the Lord tells him, this is what I want you to do. Hey, I got seven altars going. I got the animals on the offer for the offering. Number 23, and the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth. Why? Because he was a prophet of God. He was back on track. He was fulfilling his destiny to become like Jeremiah and Isaiah. He wasn't there yet for sure, far from it, but he was on that road. You say, well, I'm not there yet. No, you're not there yet. You're like the rest of us. You're on your road, though. Okay, tonight you're going to get back on your road. That's right. Victory yeah. road. You're going to stop living like you are. You're going to get back on it. That's right. Because if this guy can be restored, you can be restored. Because yes, he's a bigger screw-up than you are. No offense. He returned and stood by his burnt offering and sacrifice, he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up this parable. He says, Balak, king of Moab, you brought me from Aram and out of the mountains of the east. Come and curse Jacob and defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God has not cursed? How shall I defy whom God has not defiled? Don't you see it? Can't you see it? When you trashed yourself and you ran yourself down, you were handing your soul over to the devil, trying to put a little tumor in you. Because God called you blessed. You told God to shove it, and you cursed yourself. You spoke evil and stupidity and ignorance over yourself. I'm no good. I'm an idiot. I, I'll never mount anything. Just like my dad said. Just like my mom said. You cursed yourself. And you contradicted Father because he said you were blessed. Yes. Amen. Here's your verse of the night. How in the world shall I defy whom God has not defied? He has not defied you. He has blessed you. He has not cursed you. That's right. Then he gives a prophecy of the entire nation of Israel. This goes from bad to worse for Balak. From the top of the rocks, I will see him. Him? I wonder who that is. From the hills, I behold him. 
and who that is the people that they shall dwell alone and shall not be reckoned among the other nations well who's that who can count the dust of Jacob who's that the number of the fourth of Israel who can count them let me die the death of the righteous let me let my last end be like his what a great prophecy Balak said what are you doing what the heck are you doing Listen, the devil will say that to you if you'll just repent. Just change. Just change. The devil will go, oh my God, you're, you've turned on me. Tonight you're going to turn on me. Yes. He's going to say that to you tonight. What have you done to me? What have you done to me? I, I gave you that little lust tumor. I gave you that anger tumor in your soul. I, I've been feeding that little thing for you. Well, I teach you to take offenses. You get mad at people. I put that tumor in your soul there. Come and keep feeding that. What do you mean? What do you? I gave that to you. You going to turn on me? Darn right, you're going to turn on me. You're going to do it tonight. That's right. You blessed them. I told you to curse them. You blessed all of them. He said. And he said, "Listen, I can't say anything other than what God tells me because you didn't see that sword." You weren't talking to my ass. Balak said, come with me to another place. Okay? What's he doing there? The guy's a nut. Why is he a nut? He's desperate. Desperate people do desperate things. Balak's not going to give up because he's facing extermination. Mm -hmm. When I was young, I read this article on Steve McQueen. He came down with this weird form of cancer. Mm -hmm. He had no treatment for it. And the guy started to explore other treatment methods. <coughs> and he went here, he went there, he went to this country, he went to that one. Then he went to another one. I think he went to Mexico for a while. Weird things happened. But anyway, what was he doing? He was desperate and he wanted to live. Um, he was afraid of what was on the other side. Mm -hmm. If I was him, I'd have been scared too. Hardcore sinner. Lots of chicks. Lots of money. Balaam. Balaam demons. Money demons. What was he doing? Desperate people do desperate things. Let's go to another place. Let's try it again. Come on now. That's what Balaam did. You sit out here and I'll go talk to the Lord again. And you can curse them from there. Instead of saying no, <laughs> Balaam goes with him and goes through the charade again. Okay? <laughs> he brought him to the field of Zophim and at the top, and he builds seven altars. He builds another altar. Stand by here, and I'll go talk to the Lord over yonder. And then the Lord meets him. He puts a word in his mouth. He says, hey, why? Because he's a prophet of God. He's back on track. Go ahead and say that to Balak. Well, when he came to him, he said, does the same thing again, stands by his burnt offering. He says, Balak goes, well, what, the, what did Jehovah say? Well, he gave me this other pair. He said, rise up, Balak, and hear, hearken to me. He says, God is not a man that he should lie, or the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? Has he not spoken? Will he not make it good? So Numbers 23, I have received commandment to bless. I, hey, he blessed. I can't reverse it. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. He has not seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord, his God, is with him. The shout of the king is among them. What king was that? Interesting, another prophetic word. Balaam's a hardcore prophet here. He's back on his destiny road. Don't you see it? God meets with him. He reveals things to him. This guy's on his game. He made a mistake, but Father fully restored him. Oh, didn't you hear me? Yes, you. Yeah, I know what you are. You're a poster child for screwing up. Okay, I get that. I've been there with you. I was in the photo with you. Father restored you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 
Amen. Balaam was restored from his insanity. Hallelujah. Don't you see it? It's right there in God's holy word. He is uh, the strength of a unicorn. There's, a, there's no unicorns. Yeah. It's a wild bull. Yeah. This is fantasy island. Okay? There's no enchantment against Jacob. He says, no. That's a no there. The other one is a yes. That's what that means. <laughs> Neither is any divination against Israel. According to this, it shall be said of Jacob and Israel, what God has wrought. Look at this. What's he saying there? Look what the Lord has done. You ever sing that song? You haven't? Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Oops, the YouTubers are switching off. But anyway, I was... <laughs> I'd finish singing that if the YouTube people had any guts to listen to it. But since they don't, I'm going to stop it. Behold, this people shall raise up like a great lion. Who's he talking to? You. Okay. You. Yeah, you failed. You missed the boat. You screwed up. It doesn't matter. You can be restored. Period. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Today you're a worm. Tomorrow, Holy Ghost style, you're a liar. Thank you, Jesus. It can happen to you. Balak said, listen, if you're not going to curse them, don't stand there and blessing them. What are you doing? He said, didn't I tell you that I had to say what God said to me? He says, okay, listen. <laughs> Let's do this again. Okay, I'll bring you to another place. He's thinking, this prophet Balaam is seeing too many Jews. And I'll take him to another place where he sees less of them. That'll influence how he's thinking. Okay? Once the devil's on the run, Believe it or not, he thinks like an idiot. <laughs> if he's in command, controlling you through your mind, through your emotions, he's thinking precisely, principally, and perfectly. But you turn on him using your faith and your trust in God, the devil flees from you. He, he, he thinks like he's crazy. He's not thinking straight. He makes mistakes. Yeah. Hallelujah. He miscalculates. Yes, he does. He's miscalculating here. Balak, now the demons are babbling trying to fix this thing. They don't know what to do. Look, let's go to a, this place here. You'll see less Jews, and that'll help you. <laughs> and then you can curse them there, okay? At least give me part of them cursed. See? So now he's losing the whole deal. Now he wants to back up and catch just something. Aren't you listening? Yeah. Oh, God, the devil. Okay, you're beating me now. I'll let go of that, but let me keep that. Yeah. <laughs> you're repentant of that. Oh, shoot, that, that pisses me off, but I can't do anything about it. But let me have this. See, you've got that. You don't like your, your mother, right? She nagged you to death your entire childhood, didn't she? Always said negative things to you. No love, no comfort. Constant criticism, right? He forgave your dad. Oh, shoot, I didn't like that, but you beat me on that one. But let me, let's just keep that mother thing there. <laughs> Don't you see it? Can't you see it? Yes. If the devil can't curse all the Jews, he'll take part of the Jews and curse them. That's right. Just give me part of them. Come on, throw me a bone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All these mountains, if you don't, haven't noticed this, are all satanic mountains. Yep. All idol worshiper mountains. Mm -hmm. Numbers 24. When Balaam saw it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not go at other times to seek for enchantments. But he set his face toward the wilderness. And Balaam lifted up his eyes and saw Israel abiding according to their tribes. And he saw the Holy Ghost come upon him. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I know what you're thinking. I haven't felt God in years. I don't have those fu warm fuzzies other Christians do, and I don't have this and that and that and this. Listen, if you'll repent of your sins and change the way you think and modify your attitude, the Holy Ghost will come over and jump on you. That's right. Hallelujah. See, complaining and griping quenches the spirit. Mm -hmm. Praising and worshiping releases. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. He sees the Holy Spirit come upon him. This guy's a real prophet of God. He took up another parable. He prophesies again. This guy's on his way to Isaiah status. He's killing it right now. Balaam, son of Beor. Hey, the man whose eyes are open, he said, which heard the word of God, which saw the vision of the Almighty, falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. This is all the good stuff that came to Balaam after he screwed everything up. Yes. Oh, I'm trying to encourage you tonight. <laughs> have you have you been talking to your own ass for a while? <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you repent of that and talk to the Lord and change your life and repent of your sin, that stuff's all blotted out with the precious blood of Christ. It no longer exists. And look, the Spirit of God comes right on you. Hallelujah. I'm not making this stuff up. This is God's holy word. Can't you see this pattern here? Yes. If I can see it, I know you can. Yes. How goodly are your tents, Jacob, your tabernacles, O Israel, as the valleys are spread forth, as gardens by the riverside, as trees of, a, of laying aloes and Lord and Jehovah planter, as cedars. Oh, he's going off on them now. <laughs> he will pour out the water of the seed in buckets. Don't you see it? <laughs> Listen to me. What's happening here? Balaam screwed up bad, and he made a series of terrible mistakes, but God took his mistakes, fixed them, and took him to higher ground than he'd ever been before. Amen. The prophecies now were more powerful, more important than the ones he'd had in the past. Yeah. He was riding the wave. He was hanging ten. <laughs> but he had come from the gutter. His king shall be higher than Agak. That's the Amalekites. They wiped them out too. His kingdom shall be exalted. Who's he talking about there? Oh. No, he lives in your heart. Now he talks about the second coming of Jehovah. Oh, this is incredible. God brought him forth out of Egypt. He has the strength of a unicorn, bulls. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies, and break their bones in pieces. What's he talking about there? Our future. We come back with him in his kingdom. He's talking about us now in a way. He couched. He lay down as a lion, a great lion. Who shall stir him up? Blessed is he that blesses you and curses he who curses you. Amen. Don't you understand? Tonight, you are going to, without question, stop saying negative things about yourself from this moment on for the rest of your life. Thank you, Jesus. Eh? Oh, you like the prophetic movement? Okay, I'm prophesying for you. You're going to stop <laughs> saying negative things about yourself from this yes. night yes. forward. Yes. Because Father, Father has called you blessed. Not your relatives, your neighbors. Yeah, they think you stink. I'm talking about Father, and He's the only one that really matters. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Uh-oh, Balak pulls a Balaam. He blows his stack. Three strikes and you're out. Three demonic mountains. Jehovah blows all three of them away, prophesying over Israel 
Christ, the second coming, the whole shebang, as they say in Hebrew. <laughs> he kills it using a flawed prophet who repented and got back on his road. Destiny road. Je Jeremiah. Isaiah, I'm coming for you. There's Balaam. And for centuries, millenniums, Balaam, Jeremiah, Isaiah. He's on his way. You have a destiny. You slipped off your track. It's not over. It's not over. You're getting back on your track tonight. Amen. Yes. You bless them three times. What are you, nuts? No, he's seen the sword. He repented. He changed. You saw the cancer. You got the layoff. You got the divorce. You lost all your money. Okay, I get that. That all hurt, and it hurt bad. I follow you. I've been there. We're all human. We've all been there. God will use those failures, those trials, those tribulations to use as building blocks for you to kick the devil's face in. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Your failures, your losses are now your assets. Yes. You will now go on to be the great prophet. You are called to be as a child. Thank you, Lord. I need another Isaiah, Balaam. I need another Jeremiah. I'm calling you. Hallelujah, Jesus. He called you. That's right. You wouldn't be sitting there if you weren't called. That's right. Most of you should already be in hell. Yep, that's right. Half of you at least. Yep. Fourth of you ought to already be dead. That's right. <laughs> the way you lived, the way you eat, the people you hung out with, you shouldn't even be here. That's right. Yeah, you you hung around some crappy people. Right. <laughs> you should be dead. You were raising a jacked up family. You shouldn't even be here. Right now. Oh, but you didn't understand that somewhere, somewhere you couldn't see like Balaam. He couldn't see Jehovah there. He saw the talking ass, but he couldn't see Jehovah. You saw your sick family members. You couldn't see God standing there. Nobody likes you. I do. I want you. Yes. You were called. You didn't even see it. You didn't even see it. You were called and you never even saw it. That's right. You blessed them three times. I can't believe it. Yeah, the devil's not going to believe this. When he sees the change in you, you're not going to believe it. Now listen, get the he heck out of here. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Go back to Soothsayerville. Peshore. I was going to give you everything like a TV preacher. You get a mansion. You get fleets of limousines. Oh, you got a swimming pool in your bedroom. You got a bowling alley in your closet. <laughs> You got God. You got people asking you for your autograph. You're worshipped every time you walk down the street. I'll give you everything Satan told them guys on TV. I'll ship you money you can't even believe. That's right. That's right. There it was. You don't see that? It's exact. Nothing changes. The devil didn't change the shtick. Yeah. If it works, he keeps it going. Yeah. Millennials of it. But guess what? Jehovah screwed you out of everything I was going to give you. Oh my God. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I just whispered to you, backsliders. The devil brings back the pleasures of sin you had for a season. Mm -hmm. He brings it back. The orgasms, the drugs, the highs, the friends, the parties. He brings it back and you start to drift back over there. A tumor develops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. I did like that. That did feel good. Balak blamed it on God. Don't you see that's not Balak talking? He's demon possessed. That's a spirit talking out of that fool's mouth. 
And demons always blame everything on God. Every bad thing never happens to you. He, they blame it on God. See, God's word doesn't work. Oh, you're not loved. Ah, oh, he didn't hear your prayer. Oh, he's not listening. Everything you can think about, negative about God, a demon will tell you exactly those words. Yes. Just like this fool. God kept you from getting all this TV revenue. Mm -hmm. Don't you see it? Yes. Thank you. Listen, I told you when I came here, I had to speak what God wanted me to say. If you gave me the whole planet Earth, I, I couldn't. Now, man, Balaam, my man. <laughs> Balaam's a killer boy. He's back on track. He went from the outhouse, he's in the penthouse now. He's right on his destiny call from God. His life has incredible purpose. Mm -hmm. What is that? The highest purpose known to man is your call from God. Yes. Yes. It doesn't matter what the accoutrements look like, the money, the people. That's all secondary. Your call from God is the key to your future and your eternity. Yes, sir. That's right. And Balaam said, "Man, I'm a, I'm going home. I'm, I got to get rid of this tumor. I'm going to change." And he did. Look at him. He changed hardcore. He didn't accept any money. He didn't accept any power. I'm not going to do what's in my own mind. Whoa! Yeah. Welcome to Christianity. Christians always do what they thinks best. Right. And it always ends up screwing up. I know that from personal experience. Don't try to tell me I'm wrong. I know I'm not wrong. Well, what the Lord says, that's when I win. If I can get the mind of God on something, I can win something. If I just do the whole thing myself, I'm left to myself. I'm a failure. Now I go to my people, come, I will advertise you to what this people shall do to your people in the latter days. He's threatening you. Look, Balaam was a hardcore, legitimate prophet of God. If you don't believe me, uh, YouTubers, just take a stop on this slide. I summarized it for you just real quickly. I won't spend any time on it, but God did all these things for this flawed man. Correct? That's right. This guy was far from perfect. Not even close. Balaam rose up and went home. Oh, dude. Oh, no. No. No, you didn't do it. He told you to go home and you listened to him. Damn. No. Listen. You have been mad at God because you changed this, this, and this, but you didn't change that. And that pisses you off. Because these were three hard changes. Oh my. Let me go over here to people who are listening. You're mad at God. You're frustrated with him. You're a little hesitant with him because you made changes. See? You, want, you were supposed to make five, you made three, and those were tough changes. That's right. So you need credit for that. <laughs> Balaam made all the changes except one. Oh my God. He went back to Soothsayerville. Listen, people backslide all the time. You wouldn't believe how, what a high percentage of them go, are backslidden because of bad associations. Yeah. Hanging around people they shouldn't be hanging around. The majority. Oh boy. Number 31. And they warred Israel against the Midianites. As the Lord commanded Moses, they slew all the males. They slew the kings of everywhere, here and there, all of them, right? Here it is now. There's Midian. Now we're on this side of the Red Sea. And Jehovah is just moving down the peninsula, mopping everything up. 
right? Okay. Right? Balaam, the son of Beor. They killed him. Wait a minute. What the heck is going on here? What the heck was he doing living down there now? This guy's a super Superman cape prophet of God. He's killing it for the Lord. He's prophesying over Israel. The second coming, the future. Oh man, he's hitting one home run after the other. He goes back to Peshawar, Susaraville. He gets his tumor back. His tumor comes back. Oh, wait a minute. He moves to another neighborhood, a bad neighborhood. And loses everything. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, Isaiah, no chance. Not a chance in hell. You are going to get nothing now. Why? You went back to the wrong place. You did everything right. Oops. Got that. What are you doing in Midian, Balaam? Preaching? Uh -huh. Not likely. They executed him. Another dispute pops up. The Jews start screwing up. Hey, Moses said, did you save the women? Yeah, we saved the women. Of course we did. They're hot babes. <laughs> Aren't you seeing this? Oh, man, you got to be seeing this. We saved the hot hotties. <laughs> Guess what the hotties will do? Back then, they did it. They caused the children of Israel to seek the counsel of other gods. Who? The prophet of God. Oh, this is great. This. Is oh, I see. Now I get it. Oh, it just came in clear. I can't go over there and curse Israel. I can't do that. That means I'm not going to get my money. But I can still get my money. What I'll do is I'll teach Israel to be idolaters. God will judge them. I'll move to Midian. Balaam Copeland <laughs> and I'll live it high on the hog because I know if Israel goes into idolatry Jehovah will judge them and he did it caused a plague when the Jews went into idolatry. Balaam, Joshua 13, Balaam, the son of Beor, the soothsayer. Where the heck did the man of God learn to be a soothsayer? Let me think about that for a second. Hmm. Was it Peshor, where he lived? Oh, I think it was. Yeah, Balak. The devil had the last laugh on, on Balaam. He had the last laugh on him. That's right. He said, you go home. And he did. Yeah. He went home. He should have never been there. Mm -hmm. 
you got some people you've been hanging around you should never be talking to anymore there's That's some people right. need to you need to peel out of your life and do it tonight Amen. because they're influencing you to do things that are quenching the spirit in your life that's right no offense these people need to be flushed and you need to save yourself and leap on the life raft on your own that's right he's a soothsayer now what online to be Isaiah and now he's a soothsayer you got to be kidding don't you see that tumor is never gone it was never completely gone every backslider 100% of them always had that little tumor in there that was never fully removed that's right and the devil with infinite patience just kept picking at it if he had to years if he had to decades he'll pick at you decades to get you to become Balaam the soothsayer yeah. Yeah. Peter writes Peter writes about Paul all of them they write about famous prophets Oh, they're all great. Isaiah, he's the greatest one. Jeremiah, spectacular. On and down the list. They're all there. Peter decides to write about a prophet. He says, listen, these people coming into your church, Second Peter 2, the people in your church, he says, these people are adulterers. These people commit adultery all the time in your church. And they're addicts. Akatapasus is an addict. Mm -hmm. It's an urge you can't control. It's not recreational use. It's an addiction. There's a difference between committing adultery and being a sex addict. Mm -hmm. Those are different things. Although one could lead to the other. If that tumor stays there and keeps getting watered and fed by the devil. They can't even stop sinning, he said. They are what? Deliazo, deluding themselves. What they do is they delude unstable souls. Can you say mega churches? <laughs> they herd them into the giant church. 5,000 people. They sit there, they look around, they're entertained, they listen to them, then they head herd out to the parking lot. Head over to Golden Corral. <laughs> Hearts they have exercised with what? Oh no. Balaam demons. Balaam did coveting things, money, material things. They have children that are cursed. They've forsaken the right way. They've gone astray, following the way of Oh no. What do you love? Oh boy. I declare injustice. He was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with a man's voice forbade the madness, paraphonia, the insanity of the prophet. That became his legacy blessing Israel on the three mountains of Satan you can't do any better than that Isaiah didn't do that this guy was hitting grand slam home runs but he went back to a place he should have been gone to. Mm -hmm. And his tumor started growing. Yeah, I got this spiritual ability, I got this gifting, I got this knowledge, I'm a great preacher, I'm a great talker, I'm a great teacher, blah, 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 blah. I need to be compensated, I can generate revenue out of that. Mm -hmm. It got him. Mm -hmm. 
he switched sides. He left prophet of God, soothsayer. And his legacy is madness. Revelation chapter 2, Balaam demons attacked a church at Pergamos. Jesus said, I have a few things against you. You have those that hold the doctrine of Balaam. Oh, no. Now it's a full-blown satanic doctrine. He went from the highest highs to the ultimate low. Can't get any lower. Talk about it, to cast a stumbling block for Israel. To eat things soft, sacrifice to idols, to commit fornication. Why was he doing that? He wanted the money. Hey, Bella, come here. Now listen, the cursing thing is not going to work. Okay? But I have another idea that will work. Will you pay me for that? Oh, absolutely. Listen, send the women in. Intermarry with these Jews. Bring in the idols. The Jews will then start worshiping idols and Jehovah, which won't work. I know Jehovah, he will judge them and plague them. Ballot goes, you're on. Here's the money. Move down to Midian. I got a little mansion there for you. Bowling alley, Olympic swimming pool in the backyard. Oh, man. A petting zoo out the left side. <laughs> Go down there. Oh, I'm there. I'm on it. Yeah, but I got to keep making money. How am I going to do that? Because the Spirit of the Lord is going to lead me. Oh, no problem at all. You know what to do? Become a soothsayer. He sold his life out, died and went to hell. Can you imagine that? He's screaming in hell right now, dreaming of being back on the mountain of Baal, prophesying over Israel right now. This demon of greed and materialism and money is a monster here in America, and it's going to get massively worse. It looks like with Trump in there, the economy is going to turn up. And as soon as the economy turns up, people start partying. It's their nature. When they start partying, they start sinning. Okay? When you're flat bloke and broke and you you can't go out to the club, <laughs> see, and a five dollar table dance is five dollars too much. <laughs> when you're rolling in dough, ooh, take the money, honey. <laughs> the sin comes in. As soon as affluence and money starts to come to American society, massive levels of sin sweep our country. It's going to happen again. This is the demon of Balaam. He went from a prophet of God to a soothsayer because he wanted money, material things, comfort, <coughs> creature comforts. <coughs> it happens all the time. Don't you see it? God takes a person in church, a young girl, and he blesses her. With the most beautiful voice anybody would ever heard. Yeah. Singing like an angel. Literally. And then a tumor develops in her soul. It's only a little, little when it starts, see. It's little. Then you die and go to hell. Just like Baal. Mm -hmm. Oh, it happens to a lot of people. They go to church, singing them gospel songs. Oh, they're feeling good. They're getting a blessing. Oh, that Balaam demon comes, visits them. It's a little tumor there. You're not making the kind of money you could make over here. See? See, you can make millions like T.D. Jakes preaching, but you can make hundreds of millions on TV mm -hmm. during the day going over women's issues. <laughs> you don't see this? Yes. This is a Balaam demon yeah. all yeah. over that poor Jake's guy. Yep. This guy was a super powered preacher. Now he's on TV talking yeah. to women about love and recovering from painful hurts. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god this girl here can sing like an angel she went right over to Satan he took her why there was a tumor in there I'm not getting the recognition the money the, the glory the appreciation I'm not getting those things see once you leave the realm of the spirit and the Holy Ghost is no longer your reward the devil will give you another reward a material reward a financial reward a physical reward a lust reward and then you will start your slide into oblivion you think these pop stars worth hundreds of millions of dollars got that money because they're good singers are you nuts the devil blesses them he blesses these TV preachers you think they take in a hundred million dollars because they're a good teacher are you crazy the devil blesses them and sends them millions that's right you teach what I want taught I don't like this stuff you're teaching but if you'll add this to it I'm okay with it I'll send you the money yeah. It's the demon of Balaam. It's greed. It's lust. It's money. It's gimme. It's mine. It's me. What's about me? It's about money and glory and fame and fortune. He went from prophet of God on his way to being Isaiah to a soothsayer. They executed him. Where'd they all end up? Right here. That's his ultimate goal. The demon of Balaam and greed always puts you there in the end. Thank you. Can good people go bad? Yes. Absolutely. Of course they can. Absolutely. Happens all the time. Can good people who go bad get restored? Yes. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to prayer then. Yes. Father God, uh, this story of Balaam, Lord Jesus, was one of your masterpieces, in my opinion. I read this story. I, I like to faint it. I couldn't believe how wonderful it was. And tonight, Lord, there's some people in this room who have gotten off track. And I've been there myself. And when they got off track, the devil piled on. And he made them feel like a fool. He ran them down. He called them every name in the book. He trashed them from one end to the other. And now they're discouraged and now they're hurt but no one in this room I know this for sure I really believe it ever sinned as bad as Balaam no one in this room no one no one made the mistakes he made and if he could be restored any person can be restored I really believe that But this tumor of lust and anger and rebellion and disobedience and violence and rage, this little tumor in there of fear, this little tumor of lust has been growing and growing and somebody needs to stop it. Somebody needs to stop this thing. I know, Lord, these little tumors of sin and greed and lust and anger, whatever it is, I know these things draw in curses. And the person's life goes to hell in a handbasket. They don't die. They have to keep living in poverty, in failure, with broken relationships, with calamities, with car wrecks. With disappointments with heartaches these tumors on the soul bring in curses they leave the person emotionally devastated 
and mentally confused and mentally ill. I know that. I also know every person who wants to be restored can be restored because the Holy Ghost is here tonight. The same Holy Ghost that came upon Balaam when he repented of his sins and turned his heart back to you, Lord. And every person here tonight, in the name of Jesus, you have a little tumor in there. You got a little tumor, and you know that thing has to come out. And the Spirit of the Lord is the only person to get that thing out of there. But it's going to take a brokenness and humbleness on your part to get rid of it. You cannot casually get rid of a tumor. Surgeries are real. Surgeries are hard sometimes. Surgeries are difficult sometimes. You have to do it. And you will do it right now. In the name of Jesus. Father, I have a tumor. It's very little right now, but it keeps pulling me the wrong direction. It pulls me to bad friends, bad relationships, bad business ventures, bad a attitudes, bad arguments. This little tumor in my soul, Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. I see it now. I know it's there. I don't want to end up like Balaam. I don't want to end up executed. I don't want to end up broke. I don't want to end up homeless. I don't want to end up a total loser. I need this little tumor out of my soul. Come on, keep praying now. I need this tumor out of my soul, sweet Holy Spirit. I know you're listening to me. I know you can hear me. I love you tonight. I need your help tonight. I got a little tumor in there. I got a little tiny tumor in That thing's got to come out. I do not want to end up like Balaam. The devil executed him. The devil killed him. I do not want to die with a strange illness. I don't want to die with demons. I don't want to die broke. I don't want to die a failure. I don't want to die alone. I don't want to die alone. That I fear more than anything. Dying alone. Father, forgive me right now in the name of Jesus. Please have mercy on me. Forgive me right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. I'm so sorry. I need this tumor out of my soul right now. Right now. I need it out now in the name of Jesus. I got a little Balaam thing in there. A little lust, a little greed, a little covetousness, a little arrogance, a little pride. I'm a little too smart. I know too much. I think I know too much. I think I'm an expert. I think I'm this. I think I'm that like Balaam. He thought he was an expert. He thought he had all the answers. Oh, uh, he turned out to be a spiritual fool. He turned out to be a complete spiritual loser. I don't want to end up like him, Lord. Please forgive me right now, Lord. Please forgive me right now. Now, if you have a tumor, just stand up. We're in your seat right now. Just stand up. We want to pray for you. If you've got a tumor on your soul, you saw, you saw what happened to Balaam. He was completely restored. He was completely forgiven. He was completely restored. You can be completely restored. You got a little tumor in there. A little bit of tumor in there. And my ministry team is going to come forward real quickly. You got a little tumor there. If you need to leave, God bless you. I love you. Thank you for coming tonight. This demon of Balaam got you. The spirit of Balaam got you. And he drifted you off into a bad area. Very bad. He wasted your money. You're broke now. You have spent so much money and lost so much money. You, you can't even believe it anymore. You can't believe how much you've wasted and lost. You're going to repent of it right now. You're going to get that tumor out of your soul right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I command the spirit of Balaam to lift out of my body right now by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command this evil spirit of Balaam to come off of me right now. Get out of my body and my mind right now in the name of Jesus. I take authority over you right now. You're not going to make a fool out of me. I'm not going to die with nothing, a total loser. Come out of my body right now. I'm going to come home. 
I'm going to repent like Balaam did. He went home. He repented. I'm going to do it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Tumor of lust. Come out of me right this second. Tumor of taking offenses. Come out of me right now. Lust for sex. Lust for food. Lust for money. I command you in the name of Jesus. Taking offenses at work. That little tumor of taking offense. I'll repent of it right this second. Come out right now. Come out of my body right now. I want you out right now. Now, come out right now in Jesus name come out right now get out of there every ugly man every ugly man every ugly man go every one of them get out of my head right now in Jesus name what are you doing in there come out right now get out of my head right now come out right now come out right now I want you out in the name of Jesus Christ come out of my body right this second get out of there Get out of my body right now. Come out right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Tumor of evil, wickedness, the occult, new age, kundalini spirits, lying spirits, lying spirits. Come out right now. Fear. Fear of my future. Fear of failure. Fear of dying broke. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come there right now in the name of the Lord. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. I command you in the name of Jesus to come out right now. Come out right now. Fear of dying in this condition. I'll repent of it right now. Come out. Balaam, I bind your power. Balaam, come out of me. Balaam, come out of me right now. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of me right now. Spirit of infirmity, come out of my head. Come out of my body right now. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Hurry up. Get out of my body now. Go. Come out now. Drugs. Get out. I said drugs. Alcohol. Come out of my body right now. Alcohol. Go. Right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on now. Put your hands on your body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out in the name of the Lord. Come out right now. Hey, go get that guy right there and bring him up here. Come out right now. Come out right now. See that guy right there? Bring, bring him up. Here. That guy. Come up here. Come up here. Did you repent? Yes, I did. Okay. You repent and then raise your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, every transfer spirit from a lifetime of adultery come out of my body right now come out right now every evil spirit chronic adultery chronic adultery come out of me right this second come out right now in Jesus mighty name come out right now go get his life red come out right now get out of my body right now come out now come out right now I said come out right now get out of my body right this second come out of my body right now I said every demon from Haiti I bind your power every evil spirit from Haiti I place a curse effect get out of my head right now you hear me come out of that body right this second come out there he comes come out of that body right now get out of there Haitian demons I bind your power come out right now come out you child molester get out of that body right now come out you child molester come out of there hold that come out right now hold that come out right now I said come out right now come out you pervert yes. What do you need? All right. Just like. Shut up. When did it start? What age? Oh, when I was young. When I was like 11, maybe. Do you speak in tongues? Uh, I tried to. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. Now, uh, can you relax? Just close your eyes here. I just repeat after me. Ready? Okay. 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 Okay.
Feel that? That's the Holy Ghost coming on you. Keep saying it. Satan in the name of Jesus Christ. This guy's supposed to be a preacher and a faith healer. Come out there. Come out, there you go. Come out right now. Go now. Satan, go now. Satan, come out now. Come on, you're not praying. You call that praying? You got to fight to get rid of the devil. You can't pray like a coward. Come on now. Take command. Take command right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Get out of my body right this second. Come out. Good. Feel that? I feel a lot better. Now re relax and speak after me, and this time you add your own syllables. Abu Bashandorova. Ola Bashim Olava. Hey, will you go grab that lady right there? The old lady back there. Ola Mashandorova. Ola Mashandorova. Ola Mashandorova. Ola Mashandorova. Just speak it out by faith. Kole Mashandorova. Good, like that. Keep going. Ola Mashandorova. Make him keep going. Ola Mashandorova. What's the story? Story. Yes. I don't know. I did that in my life. It's just like something's clocking me. Yeah, no. Who hurt you when you were a kid? I don't know. I know I got hurt. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. I just don't know. I just know I was How many times have you been married? Uh, two times. Huh? Two times. Was your first husband abusive? Verbally? What was his name? What? Andy. Did he, uh... Andy was his name. Okay. Take a big breath. Where's is Andy still alive? Where's, where's he at? He lives in Phoenix. Raise your hands. Lord Jesus. Right now, find him and put your loving hands on him and bless him. And I, and I release him from my soul tonight. All of Andy's demons. All of Andy's demons must come out of me tonight. In the name of Jesus. Now, Andy, come out right now. Come out. Take a breath and blow. Come out. Andy, come out. All the abuse from her first husband. Come out now. Of her second husband, come out now. Come out. Low self esteem, low self concept, being hard on myself. I repent of it right now. And I command the spirit of rejection to come out of me. Go now. Come out right now. Go now. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out. Rejection. Low self esteem. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. I release him now. Come out of my stomach right now. Come out of my stomach right this second. Go. Come out of my womb. Come on now. Let's go. You got to fight if you want to live. Do you want to live? Do you want to live? You gotta fight. Get out of my body right now. Stop stalling. Stop stalling right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Go. Get out of there.
Come out of that body right now. Jesus, I'm sorry. I hurt you. Diabetic. Diabetic. Diabetes is caused by uh, joints and diabetes are caused by, caused by low self-esteem and self-hatred when you were younger. Did you used Very to hate true. yourself? Very good. Did you used to hate yourself? Did you, you used to hate yourself when you were younger? No. Very mediocre, unthinkable. Right. Raise your hands. Lord Jesus, I repent of it right now. I repent of giving myself diabetes by hating myself and running myself down, saying negative things. God forgive me. God, please forgive me. God, have mercy on me. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself right now. Every man, every demon affected man that ever touched my body comes out tonight. Every one of them. All of them. Every demon infected man. Go. Right now. Go right now. God have mercy. Insulin is another God. What? Insulin is another God. You're going to repent of it right this second. Lord, I'm sorry I hurt you by hating myself. I'm sorry I gave myself diabetes. Come out of that spine right this second. Come out of there right now in the name of the Lord. Please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Sorry, I'm so sorry, Lord. You never touched your body coming out right now. Every, every rapist. Every rapist. Every rapist. Come, come out of there. You man hater. The demon that hates men. Come out right now. The demon that hates men. Come out right now. Come out quickly. Let's out of here. Here he comes. There he comes. There he goes. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Say it. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Have mercy on me, Lord. God, forgive me. Come on, just repent of it. God, forgive me. Come out of my body right now. Diabetes, come out. Self hatred, come out. Come out right now. Low self esteem, come out. Come out in the name of the Lord. Hurry up. Go. Come on, sweetheart. Just repent of it right now. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. Say it. Lord Jesus, I'm so sorry. If you'll repent of it, you will be healed. If you repent of it, you will be healed. Come on, what is it? If you repent of it, you'll be healed. Thank you. Just repent of it. Here's how you do it. Lord, I'm so sorry I got involved in witchcraft. I'm so sorry I got involved in adultery. I'm so sorry I slept with men I should have never even shaken hands with. Oh my God. I'm so sorry, Lord. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on him. Come out. Come out right now. Get out of her back. Come out, you snake. Get out of her back right now. Every tumor. Every tumor of sin you have in your soul and your mind comes out tonight. So now the tumor of fear must go. You have a demon of fear, a tumor of fear. 
and you're going to fight back right now. Thus saith the Lord, Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yes, yes, says the Lord. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. <laughs> you will no longer curse yourself, for God has blessed you. You will repent of a right to second. I repent of saying negative things about myself and running myself down. Get out of my back right now. I told you to come out right now. Tell him to come out. Get out of there. Tell him. Get out of my body. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You tell him to come out. Do it. Satan, I command you to come out. Go. Satan, get out of my body right this second. Come out now. Go. Go. You need to be watching this. You'll be doing this someday. Satan, I command you. Get out. Come out. Come out now, I said. Satan, lose your hold. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out of my head. I told you to go. Satan, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Get out of my back right now. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. Get out of my back. Get out of my back right this second. Get out of my back right this second. Come out of my stomach. Come out of my genitals right this second. Come out, you pervert. Come out. Come out, you pervert. Right now. Come out. Pray harder. Fight harder. Get out of my body right this second. Do you hear me? What are you, sinking demon? Are you deaf? Come out right now. Satan, are you deaf? Come out, I said. Come out of my mind. Negative thoughts. Lies. Negativity. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out of me right now, I said. I said, come out. Stop stalling and come out. Go now. Come out of my throat. Come out of my face right now. Get out of there and go. Go now. Go. Come out of there. Go now. I said, hurry up, witch. Come out here, you warlock. Just pray hard. Dear Jesus. Huh? Been leading through life. Go ahead and repent of it. Double minded sin. Repent of it right now. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. Come on, repent of it. God, have mercy on me. Please help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Forgive me for being double minded. Forgive me for being double minded. Satan, I hate your guts. You ran me down for 20 years. You trashed me for 20 years. You made a fool out of me for 20 years. It's payback time. Get out of my face right this second. Did you pray for him yet? Yes. He got massive to the rest. Yeah, he got it. Come out of that body right now. Get out of my body right now. I told you to come out. Come in house. Self hatred, low self esteem. Diabetes, come out of my legs. Come out of my body. Go. Diabetes, come out. Right now, go. Right now, go. What's this girl doing? What's she doing? What's going on? Here? What? She's praying. She's praying for what? I asked her to praise the Lord because we're praying. She says she's got a spirit of depression. I'm breaking the power to praise. Right, she's speaking tongues. Yes. Yes. All right, Miss Lynn, Brother Mike's gonna pray for Hey, what's wrong with you? Uh, I have, uh, I have a uh, uh, bipolar. How long you have bipolar? 
Ten years. And uh, how many times have you been married? How many times have you been married? One time. You currently married? You married now? No. Divorced? Were you married ten years ago? Uh, Were you married ten years ago when you got bipolar? That's when she said she got it. That's when she said she got it, but she was married to the man who was abusive. What was his name? Jack. Jack. Oh, Jack? Did he have a mental illness, Jack? Did he verbally abuse you? Did he? I said, Jack. Yeah, we prayed, for, we prayed for Jack to get out yesterday. You did? We got Jack out. And then who else hurt you other than Jack? Mom. Mom was severely ill. Mentally ill, too. Mom was? Oh. Did she and Mom have bipolar? I don't know what she has. What was her name? How about your grandma or your grandpa on your mom's side? Okay. How about your dad's side? So it started with your mother? My mom passed away now. My mom passed away. She's dead? What'd she die of? Uh, she died. She died in the river, but we don't know why. Died in the what? In the river. In the river. In the river. Oh, she drowned. Oh, okay. What was her name again? May. May. May was. Her name. Isn't that the root of it, May? Isn't that the root of it, May? That's the mother's name. Yeah. May? Isn't she the root of this whole mess? Yeah, we prayed about May too last night. But I think there's more. Like you said, you mentioned the the grandmother too. I think something happened with the grandmother. I don't know. What was your grandmother's name? Get up right now. The name of Jesus. Fire right now. Jump. Jesus, go. 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 Let's try that. Yeah, this should have this should have all come out already. My grandma don't have anything. I think it's more my father. Your father? What's wrong with your father? He's a very verbal abuse. Oh, verbally abusive? Was he hard on you? Very hard. Was he critical of you? What was his name? Long. What did he die of? No, he's still alive. He's still alive. What's his name? Long. Long? Okay, that's it. Okay. Oh, so bad. You get out of my body right this second. Did you hear me? I told you to come out of here right now. Go. Hurry up, come out of there right now. Haitian demons, I, I curse you to failure tonight. I bind your power. All these ugly spirits from Haitia. No. No, you must leave the woman of God. You rapist. Child molester. You child molester. Go out of that woman of God right now. Quickly. Quickly. When you can get to it, I'm going to talk to you about this. I'm going to help the people. How's the healing over there? What for? How's the healing? It's empty. We don't use it anymore. The house of healing is closed. Okay. Oh, you haven't been over there? No, I haven't been over there. No, we shut it down when we moved here. Yeah, we, I'm not sure what we're going to do with it. I'm not sure. Oh, no. How about letting you run it? I'm sending it. I'm trying to figure out something to do with it. I need to figure out something to do with it. How about letting you rent it until you get it? Rent it for what? Living. For living? Get out of where I am and then I stay up here. Worry about it. Okay. Let me know. Let me know. I'm not going to ask you again because I don't want to feel like I'm trusting you. Okay. I will pray about it. Come out right now. Now, in order to get rid of these tumors, who was it? That was it. That was it, Brother Mike. Thank you, Jesus. Satan, you're not stealing my gift of healing anymore. You're not stealing my ministry anymore. I'm not sitting around listening to negative thoughts anymore. You're coming out now. I said now. Come out right now. Hurry up and come out now. Now, not tomorrow. Now, I said. Come out right now. 
What you need? Bless you, Chaplain Gray. <laughs> yeah, I called you. I'm sorry, <laughs> yes, I missed. Thank it. you, thank you. Yes. What well, do you have in mind? I would like to come and uh, just train none of you. Train for do do deliverance. Whatever you will let me do. Whatever you allow me. Well, to do. the first thing you got to do is uh, come to a couple services and see if this feels comfortable. Because this don't feel comfortable to everybody. Yes. It's a unique yes. kind of a thing. My, uh, so I came first, last week, and they said that you be on a on a Friday. <laughs> I'm on so Fridays. This is, this, this my this is my second time. Okay. I came so, last night, but this is my second week that I came. Yeah. And you're with a group of chaplains? Yes. Do they have any interest in deliverance? Or just you? Right now it's just me, but I, I, I know that, that my group, my class, are quite a few of them probably is. Okay. Because we've been studying the book, uh, Debate the Satan. Okay. Which was very interesting. Yeah, that's, uh, what's his name? Uh, John, uh, John uh, Bevere. Bevere. Yeah. yeah, he's real good, but he, this part here he doesn't do. He doesn't understand this. Up till this part, he's really good at it. He knows a lot about the devil. But this part, he's lost I'm on. I'm having a sinus, a, it's been like a sinus dream. I was yeah. sharing with her that I had a dream like, 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 like someone was trying to dip my head in black, black blood. Was any of your relatives in witchcraft? None that I'm conscious, but I'm New age? aware. But I do know on my father's side of the family, I had a cousin that was at, what you call, Morning Star, Eastern Star. <clears throat> and then my... My husband was from Nigeria. Nigeria? Oh, no. What religion was he over there? Well, he claimed to be Catholic. Okay. Uh, come here uh, Thursday night when yeah, Francis is here. Okay. This coming, this coming Thursday. Okay. I'm not sure. Um, before you leave, i got to give you a piece of some paper. Two pieces of paper. And then we need to check on the board in the hall there. Okay. When Francis is here, because he was Catholic. He's from Nigeria. Okay, and that sounds like a curse. That's what your, uh, one of your work from the, from him. Oh, from my, from my husband. Yeah. Transfer. And, Transfer spirit. And I don't think he ever wanted me to be married either, because every time I come close to. Since he okay. cursed you. That's what that is. Yeah. Well, we got to break that. Well, Francis is knows all about that stuff. Ah, okay. But don't leave until I give you this paperwork, okay? Oh, I thought you wanted me to follow stay you. Right, okay, stay, stay right, stay right here. here. Okay. Yeah, don't leave. Okay. <laughs> Love you, brother. Appreciate you. You're wonderful. Hey, thank you so much. I'll be in touch with the. Uh, I can't believe I'm. Like Now, uh, YouTubers, listen, this is Brother Mike. Now, you go to the website immediately tonight and hit hardcorechristianity.com. you got to hit the post deliverance button at the top of the website. you got to hit the post deliverance button at the top of the website. So you don't lose your healing or your deliverance tonight, okay? Number two, hit the teaching button on the website. And read the article on Satan's counterattack. You will be attacked within 48 hours of this service. You will be attacked. Satan's counterattack. It's under the teaching button on the on the website. And then the hit the teaching button again and read the article How Satan Controls the Mind. Life saving revelations in that little article. How Satan controls the mind. I will not be here next Friday. Rick will be here next Friday. Getting all the YouTube hits and all that stuff. You'll love him. He'll bring another deep message. Friday night, Rick will be here. Thursday night, preaching, teaching, healing, and deliverance, 7 p.m. Mountain Time. We are now on Mountain Time. Arizona does not go to Daylight Saving Time. We are Mountain Time now. 7 p.m. See you next time.